tiger, geometric, stripes, butterflies are some of the prints you're going to see and the types of fabric are various <laughs> lace, scuba, ponty, double brush, poly, some of the relaxed sewing I've been getting up to and I have a bunch of beautiful skirts and I can't wait to share them with you so keep watching. Sneaky peek! <laughs> Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. Welcome back if you're always joining and if you're brand new to this channel you will see a lot of practical content here about sewing and for different levels of sewing as well all the way from beginner to a bit more advanced I try to have a mix so if you think that's a cool idea go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you can keep getting updates of when new videos go live you can tap on the bell so you never miss out. Today I have some skirts to share with you, um, seven actually. Only five I have made in the last couple of days, but I want to share seven of them because they all come from the same pattern. And this pattern is the Cebu Illusion Skirt Collection from Love Notions. And it's funny that it's called Skirt Collection because I actually do have a skirt collection made from this pattern. <laughs> but it's actually referring to the fact that you know you buy one pattern and you get seven skirt patterns within that pattern so tell me about cost effectiveness really you know so the styles of skirts you can expect to find in this pattern are the pencil skirts a-lined gourd swing pleated asymmetric wrap and my favorite <laughs> dropped yoke with a flounce i think that has been my favorite to make so far well, oh, I, I, I like all of them, but I'm really excited about that one. These are designed to be made with knit fabrics, medium to heavyweight knits, with at least 40% stretch horizontally. There is some negative ease there, a little bit of negative ease, so it's, this is not for wovens at all. It's, it won't work for wovens. And the sizing comes from extra small to triple extra large. That goes up to a waist of 41 inches and hips of 51 and a half inches. Now, depending on what type of skirt you want to make, uh, what measurement is most important. Out of all these seven, the only ones that you need to choose based on your waist are the swing skirt and the pleated skirt because due to the design, they have plenty of room at the hips. For the other ones, the hip is the most important measurement, you know, the more fitted ones, the gourds, you know, A-line, pencil skirt, all the other ones. Just look at the chart and choose based on your hip and it's going to work. The ones that I made, I added anywhere from one and a half to two and a half inches, depending on the style and how I wanted them to look on me. I like them all just above the knee. That's the length that I like. So not hugely above the knee or midi or mid knee, no, I just like them above the bone, like at the knee, you know, that's what I like. For my fabric choices, I have a really wide range of fabrics going from lace, really nice lace, <laughs> ponty, scuba, athletic wear material that I had intended for leggings, but then changed my mind and, you know, um, wide variety. So. In the next segment I'm going to take you to my sewing room while I was putting all this together and I'm gonna go over with you all the pattern pieces needed for the versions that I'm making I'm making three of the seven styles available in this opportunity I think there are two styles here that I will never make they're just not my style and that is the pleated one and the swing one I always prefer a silhouette of skirt that is closer fitting not excessively tight but whenever I've made things with swings or pleats I tend not to grab for them that much as I do the other styles that I wear on a daily basis but I mean there's still five skirts there that I like and I made a ton of them so let's go into my sewing room in the past and I'll be back stressed and I know I've been really busy making videos for the channel and it is taking a toll of me I haven't had a break in ages but actually I just can't take a break you know this is my source of income producing videos constantly is what gives me an income so there you go I'm going to be making nice relaxed sewing knit skirts easy to make I'm making five of them I have already cut them out but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with them they are all very simple. Three of them are the same and the two are different. This time I want to make three pencil skirts, 
two of these I'm making them out of scraps and I'll show you the fabrics the other one is a refashion so I bought a skirt slightly larger than my size when I was back home in Chile this summer thinking I'm gonna tear this apart and make it a really nice pencil skirt I love the fabric you're gonna see and you're gonna see why I like it it's totally my style and now there are two skirts that I haven't made before one is the dropped yoke with the flounce. I'm really excited about that one and I'm really excited about the fabric I've chosen. And the other one is the asymmetrical wrap skirt and I've also chosen a beautiful fabric I've been hoarding for ages. So for the pencil skirt, you get one piece, one pattern piece that is cut on the fold, both for the front and the back. And they are the same for the front and the back. And you'll see that it's very common with knit style skirts that you can get away with doing that when you're working with wovens you've got darts and other things going on you don't have that negative ease of a neat fabric that's going to conform to your body so you can't really do the same piece for the front and the back with a woven but you can with a knit so i've got this one now i do need length adjustments i have added one and a half inches there at the shorten and lengthen line for me it's easier to have different papers when i'm placing on fabric especially if i'm working with scraps i made a piece for the front and i made a piece for the back now i made one small change for this one that i have assigned is the back if i put this one on top there you're going to see that I lowered the center back by 5 eighths of an inch from the center back and then tapered to nothing on the side seam. And that is just a slight sway back adjustment that I need to do for my skirts and pants because I know my body and I know the curve that my waist has, you know, around my body. So that's why I was also interested in having separate pieces. Now for all these skirts, you use the same waistband and there's no pattern piece as such it says there to cut out seven inches how tall your waistband is by the length and that varies per size now for my size i'm making a size large i measure the waistband there it says cut on the fold and everything i'm going to have a waistband that is 28 inches that's six inches smaller than my waist and it says on the pattern that it's supposed to be snug at the waist but I don't want it to be that snug. Whenever I make neat waistbands, what I'm comfortable with is that the length, the, the total circumference of this waistband be four inches uh, smaller than my natural waist. So I made mine a little bit longer than what it suggests, personal preference. So this is my waistband and I made mine six inches tall, not seven, because when I fold this like that, and then discount the 3 8 seam allowance. I like this width. I think seven inches is too wide for my personal preference as well. So it's just fold. And you know, when I cut this on the fold and have a total length, it'll be four inches smaller than my natural waist. So I'm happy with that. And that's what I'm using to cut every single waistband. These are the easiest, easiest skirts to make. You know, two side seams and a waistband and a hem. Very, very simple. So I'm excited to get cracking with these because I'm wearing skirts all the time. Now last year I made a moto jacket with butterflies with this ponty fabric and I'll put a picture here, beautiful, beautiful jacket. And I had a tiniest piece left, I knew it was going to be enough for a pencil skirt and I saved that and now I cut it out. So black ponty with butterflies, super nice, I'm excited about this one because then I'll, I can wear it together with my moto jacket and I think it's going to look really cool. And with this one, I was able to cut waistband, only it's going to be pieced at the side seams because I got it from scraps. Okay, the other one I have already cut out and it's lace, <laughs> totally transparent and also comes from a scrap. Now look at the bottom of the lace there. So I trimmed all the edges there to have this finish. So I'm not gonna have to hem this. This is how the hem is gonna finish there at the bottom. And this is the, how it's gonna be on the top. So to this is totally see-through because you know, it's lace. So I've got a front and a back and I found in my stash some blue ITY, quite thin, but appropriate. So this is gonna go behind this. 
I'm going to line the skirt. I'm going to sew the two skirts, the lining and the mane separately and they're just going to be together caught in the waistband. I'm not going to be um, underlining. So that will take care of the sheerness, although I did cut the lining shorter at the bottom so that you can see this little bit there, I think it's going to look really cool. Now this lace does have stretch, has, does have appropriate stretch, so I'm considering it like a knit, although it's not, you know. And for this one, I'm going to use a navy waistband. Navy waistband with a blue skirt, you know, I'm happy with that. And the third pencil skirt I'm gonna make, I'm gonna deconstruct this, and this skirt is longer than I would wear it, so I'm hoping from the hem, I'm gonna be able to get a waistband. And you're gonna see the fabric. I love the fabric, it's a scuba. Quite thick, really thick scuba. <laughs> and it's like this. So it's already, it, it's already made, like it's hemmed, it's a total skirt and the way they did a waistband here was like an elastic in there somehow, um, I don't know what brand this is, it's an extra large, um, when I put it on it's very wide at the hips and waist, it's just wide all over but it's really simple, um, there are some darts there that are going to be super easy to remove, I don't need them to be there, it's really stretchy white on the other side. I'm excited about this one because the combination of the pinks and the navy and the white are just so so beautiful. This is from a thrift shop, um, the town where my in-laws live just across the street there's a thrift shop and I always go there and I always find stuff and yeah it was very 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 cheap and very nice so I love it. It's very hot and it's very late. That's why I'm talking a bit quiet, you know, my family's all asleep and it might be a little bit echoey because I'm in my sewing room with the door closed. Whenever I do that, it does get a little bit echoey. I took my thrifted skirt completely apart. It was searched on the side seams and that was it. So the seam allowance was really small and really bulky. I don't like that. I took off the waistband and now I'm just using uh, my other skirt as the pattern piece. I think it's just easier. I just put them there and I'm going to cut and look, I'm going to have enough at the bottom here to do the waistband in the same fabric. Um, I'm going to be serging and pressing these seams open separately, not together. It is quite bulky and spongy, you know, scuba. So I'm not happy to like sew and serge these together. They won't look nice on the sides. They're gonna look super bulky. Um, so I'm actually thinking of leaving more seam allowance on this one so that it's a wider seam allowance. I'm gonna see what I can do. I'm gonna show you the asymmetric wrap skirt now. I've got them all here. Now I'm really excited about this one because I haven't made it and I can just see myself wearing it and I'm so excited. <laughs> So basically for this one, you cut the same front and back on the fold, exactly the same. And then there's one pattern piece that you just cut once that goes overlaid over the extended front. And it's not a straight wrap, it's, it's sort of sideways asymmetric, it's really cool. Oops. And I've got the pattern piece right here. So this is the top part of the waist and it does follow the curve of the waist on the top. Here is the hip here on the side and then it goes down like that. So it's, it's not a, a rectangle at all, it's really asymmetric and when I was cutting this out I thought you know I might as well share what I'm doing because it's really weird. So I have here the front and the back, they're um, just both cut on the fold so that's okay. And I had an odd piece of fabric left over on the side. Um, to get the most out of my fabric, I cut the selvages in like that towards the middle to get my front and my back pieces. And this asymmetrical bit just needs to be cut out once. This is going to be overlaid on top of the front and I'm going to have to have mine be more asymmetrical than original because look, if I just had that little bit of fabric here, I would be able to cut it out as per the original. But you know, the width of my skirt took out that piece there. So here it is slightly slanted. I'm just gonna have to fold that in and make it even more slanted so that it does fit into this piece that I have. And I'm willing to do that, you know. Um, I want the skirt, I want this skirt, <laughs> and I'll do what it takes. 
So I'm just going to fold this paper from the edge there and just try to make it level up to there and it'll be even more asymmetrical than the original. This is how mine's going to look. So this is the part that overlays on top of the extended front. This is the asymmetric bit that you just cut once. Originally this would have been like less angled, a little bit less. I had to modify that to get it to fit the piece of fabric that I have and I think it still looks really cool. This print had stripes and things going all across in different areas. So you can see here there's this print, flowers, and then it went into this stripe. So that middle section, that was just mainly stripes and flowers. That's where I got this asymmetric bit that will go over the top. So I think it'll be really cool. I love that it's got different prints across the fabric. You know, all that print there on one side and then darker here and then stripes on the other. I think it's a really striking fabric. Okay, and the fifth skirt I'm making is the one with a dropped yoke with a flounce on the bottom. Now, I think these skirts are extremely flattering. Um, any person I've seen wearing them looks amazing. I have chosen a single brushed poly and it is not the appropriate fabric. It is not the appropriate fabric. Now, I would have wished to have something thicker, um, more similar to the one I've just shown you that I'm gonna make the wrap skirt out of, but I didn't. So I'm going to line this one. I'm just gonna cut another layer in a lining fabric and attach at the waist and insert it with the waistband and that's how I'm gonna deal with the thinness of the fabric this is the piece this is the yoke piece and now you same as on the pencil skirt you cut two both on the fold there and also I have made a line there we you know for my waist at the front the curve is less than it is at the back for my sway back and I also have two pieces one is for the back one is for the front and the difference is um, the same you know, this one's cut a little bit lower there, about 5 eighths of an inch. Now, I did need length adjustments and I decided to add two and a half inches to that one. There is a short and a lengthened line there and that will just add length here above. Um, my full hip is around here, so it will go beyond that, sort of mid thigh and that's where the flounce is going to start. So it will be nice and fitted up to there and then poof with a circle. Now, this is the original pattern. And it says here to put on the fold here and on the fold there. That means that when you have your fabric laid out on your table normal, folded with one selvage on the edge and the fold on the other edge, you have to fold that again. You're gonna have a fold there and a fold there. So you have a corner of fabric right there and you have a fold here and you have a fold there and then you cut. When you cut it all out, you end up with a circle and then the circle in the middle. That smaller circle in the middle is what goes on to the skirt piece that you've already made on the top, you know, the side seams. So this is the little piece that goes on the top. This is the yoke, skirt yoke piece. And look at all these swirly bits and the browns and the tans and the blacks. It's just so beautiful. And on the other side, it's just white. Now it's lightweight. It's not heavyweight. It's it has the right stretch. It's not a fabric I would wanna wear that fitted on my body being this thin. You will see the lines of my undies. So that's why I'm just gonna cut a pencil skirt to put underneath. I'm not gonna cut the flouncy bit from lining because you don't need that. This is the back. So they're pretty similar, it's just that the back is cut lower a little bit on the center back. Now I was careful to mark the middles there. Those long lines there are going to match the center back of the skirt and on the other side the center front and on the sides here I marked the other quarters of the circle there with little red lines. These are going to be on the side seams. So I'm just going to go and sew now. That It'll be really fun. I'm going to have a lot of fun, a lot of mindless sewing fun. I'm going to watch a movie and whip all these up. Now if there's something interesting that I want to show you while I sew, I will film it. So yeah, I'll see you soon. Anyway, I've been sewing like crazy. I've sewn a bunch of waistbands and a bunch of side seams. And now I'm working on the dropped yoke with the flounce. And I've got the circle there. It's a full circle. As I mentioned on the circle, I'd marked it in quarters uh, where I wanted to join with the center back, the center front and the side seams. So they match there. And the circle matches the circumference at the bottom of this yoke perfectly. So I've got a full circle here. Um, 
that I'm going to sew on the serger and then sew on the sewing machine. that's sewn there you can see it's going to stretch and this is this needs to stretch because there's negative ease here at the hips I'm not going to do a straight stitch there although you have seen me do straight stitch on other garments in knits that are just looser and are not going to be skin tight on me I mean not that this is going to be skin tight but there is negative ease you know so cute I'm so excited about this one this is a very drapey fabric and that's why I've chosen it even though it's thinner than it's supposed to be because I know it's gonna look amazing and I just have my lining now that's just normal a mini skirt and I'm gonna slide this in so that the seams of the lining are touching the seams of the skirt basically the lining goes wrong side to wrong side and I slide it in so that the seams are touching side seams are touching so when I actually wear the skirt, I'm going to have the nice seam on the inside, you know, the seam. And then I'll just treat this skirt as one when I go and attach the waistband later. This is a symmetric wrap skirt and I've been working on this front piece that overlaps and I've worked on it separately as per instructions, you're supposed to hem and then fold all this slanty business and sew it before you actually assemble onto the skirt. So when you see seam lines on stripes, it really disturbs me. I don't wanna go in there with my twin needle and having black thread going across. I don't want that. So I don't have to do it when I can hand sew it. <laughs> so I'm using a three quarter inch hem allowance there. And on this corner, I did a mitered corner right there, just a little one. And that goes all the way up slanty like this. So all this has been hand sewn. So I've gone and placed this on top of the front, right sides up. So it's basically wrong sides to right sides. That's how it's gonna look on the front. And then I've got the back here attached on the other hip. So. I've pinned there as you can see everything has been searched separately already because I want to press these seams open so I can go ahead and sew that seam there this hip that doesn't have this overlay and this one I have pinned it so I've pinned the asymmetric overlay onto the front on this side it's just pinned and now I can go ahead and pin this bit that is the back on top so I'm going to have the back, the front is over there underneath and sandwiched between is this asymmetric business here. So I'm going to finish pinning this. So I've got three layers of fabric here to sew together and on this side just two. Really simple, one seam there, one seam there and then I'll hem the actual skirt because this is already hemmed and you can see it's shorter there because it's already been hemmed. Okay, so I mentioned that I was able to get a top out of the scraps I had from cutting my dropped yoke with a flounce skirt. And I was so happy to get a top. And this is the one, you can see the fabric, you can recognize it. This is a Belladonna top. Um, I've made three of these before, a couple weeks ago when there was a Feature Friday sale, which by the way, the Sybil Illusion Skirt Collection is the Feature Friday sale today. Um, so this pattern is normally priced at $14 and today it's at $5. I'm gonna show you all the skirts now and I'm gonna start with two that I made last year when I wrote a, a guest blog post for Love Notions and I featured, I chose to feature the, this pattern last year because I like skirts, you know. And I had a hack in mind that I wanted to share and with the pencil skirt I added a long metal zipper all the way from the top to the bottom enclosed within the waistband and it looks really cool and I can't even tell you how much I wear these skirts they're both made of ponty one is red one is black so they're twin skirts I have the black one here and the red one is on the other side 
I think you can see the red one better, but the, the zipper goes all the way inside the waistband and it's side like that. It's super neat, super clean finished. And at the bottom, it goes inside the hem too. See? So if you think that's hard, it's really not. Last year when I wrote this guest blog post, I actually filmed the step-by-step -step of putting in this zipper and embedded it into that blog post. So if you go there, I will link this blog post from last year below. If you're interested in adding a zipper to a pencil skirt, you'll see it there. The same style that you see me film videos here um, when I do step-by-steps, same thing, my voice, my blue mat, everything's the same, only that it's not on my channel, it's on that blog post. So head over there if you want to see. Don't you think this is starting to wear me? You've been raining down like hail on a week. I have tried to give you my soul, but you can't love something. Don't you think this is starting I really love them and I reach out for them all the time because I just love them. You know, black and red, what's not to love? And they go a long way in my wardrobe. So let me tell you how nice sewing these was. Like the main parts of it, the side seams, the waistbands, all that was really good. But I did make it a little bit lengthy for myself as I do. <laughs> and I did hand hem most of these. I really don't like to sew by machine ponty. I think you can really see it when you wear it. And I have a twin needle and you know, it's okay. But if I can sit down and watch a movie and hand him, I will happily do it. Last year I had a scrap butterfly print ponty and I mean, come on, look at this print. Look at this print, it's just so nice. And I did save that little scrap last year from making the jacket knowing I could get a pencil skirt. And I even made the sleeves shorter on that jacket and added contrasting cuffs so that I could have an amount that I needed for a, for a, for a skirt. So I've, I've always got pencil skirts at the back of my mind as the perfect scrap busters because I wear them so much and this is just too fun. This is one that I made with seams on each side here for the waistband in order to get a waistband from the same fabric. Next one is also made from a scrap. <laughs> I knew I had enough for a skirt, so I was really excited to put that aside. Thinking of a pencil skirt, and this one's pretty special. I find it's a little bit, a little bit fancy, not that much. I could still dress it down if I wanted to. And I love this at the bottom here. Um, they're like triangles at the bottom, and I just cut out, cut away excess here. And you know, lace does not fray. So I was able to get this at the bottom and I was able to match the sides. Look, there's this, the side seam and there's a little triangle coming out from there. So I was really careful to place the fabric there when I cut it so that I wouldn't end up with like weird triangles on the sides, you know? So just an extra step to think about when you're doing stuff like this. Um, this one is lined, of course. You saw that I was cutting out lining and I did film the footage of myself putting the lining inside showing you, but that footage turned out terrible. It was really late at night. It was super blurry and I just did not have enough lighting in the room. The difference between lining a regular skirt and this type of transparent skirt is that, you know, it's really see-through, so you can see the seams through that. So I don't want to put the lining fabric wrong side to wrong side inside so that I have a nice seam to touch my skin because then the seam of the lining is going to be seen on the outside, if you know what I mean. 
So what I do is do it the other way. Basically the lining, right sides of the lining touching the wrong side of the fabric inside, lining up the seams, and then you just meet it up at the waist. And that means that what is going to be seen through the lace is the nice seam. And then attach your waistband as per usual. I'm using a navy blue waistband made out of athletic wear material, very nice and stretchy and it holds up and it feels amazing when it feels like you've got nothing on. And I wouldn't have made this waistband out of lace, that would have been ridiculous and I didn't have enough anyway. So I absolutely love this one. The next one I sort of called a refashion, but it really isn't. I didn't put any creative element into this one, so I would just rather rename that a resizing using a thrifted item. <laughs> so you saw that I'd purchased that skirt. It was wider and longer than I would wear it. And when I saw this in the shop, I knew it had the potential of just tearing it apart, putting pattern pieces on that and just resizing it for myself and using the extra length to create the waistband. And I always had a doubt if that was possible because, you know, when you're looking at a garment, you use eyeballing lengths and widths and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that type of waistband this skirt came with, it had like an elastic on the top folded in. I'm not a fan of that style that much at all. And you saw that I was able to get this one. This is scuba. It's really thick. And now I've worn it inside the house just now to take the pictures. <laughs> it was really hot to wear. And I know scuba is like that. It's really spongy, really thick. I did mention that I wanted to press the seams open and make the seam allowances slightly bigger. So the skirt here includes 3-8 seam allowance. That's what all these have. But for this one, when I cut it out, <clears throat> I just extended that seam allowance by a quarter of an inch, just a smidgen on the side so that I could sew with 5 eighths of an inch. <clears throat> that way it presses better and flatter. I would suggest using a slightly larger seam allowance if you're working with heavier weight fabric. I would definitely do that on a scuba. And even if I had another fabric that was really heavyweight, I didn't think the ponties needed extra because they weren't that heavy, but this one definitely. I love these colors, I love this print. I have a linen blouse that I need to refashion that is exactly that color, that darker pink color. So I'm excited to do that soon because now I can have like a really nice outfit. Um, so yeah, super happy. I mean this skirt cost me like what? $1.50 maybe at the thrift shop and now I have this amazing scuba skirt. <laughs> Another new one I made that is one that I hadn't made before is asymmetric wrap skirts. Now this one will take a bit more fabric than what you're used to if you're just making pencil skirts. This one needed, you know, the full pencil skirt cut out anyway, plus that asymmetric piece that you saw me cutting out. I was determined to make it work and I had this amazing fabric. This is active wear fabric. I bought it for leggings. It's heavyweight, 90% polyester, 10% spandex and it is heavyweight. It's opaque. If you stretch it, you're not going to see anything through it. The compression is amazing. The stretch horizontally and vertically is the same. And who's going to really appreciate the beauty of this print if I'm just out running in the street on my own, you know? So I just made it into a skirt instead. And the slant I have here on the asymmetric wrap is more pronounced on mine because I had to like cut it out from here. As you saw, I was missing a little chunk of fabric. But don't let things like that stop you. Um, I don't let things like that stop me when I want to make a design. Especially if it's already meant to be asymmetric and slanted anyway. What is the difference of that much going to do and just create 
a more pronounced angle and even it looks cool anyway if i chose black or white to sew across the hems i'm just not gonna like how it looks i just don't like that so i hand hemmed all this you know and the skirt so i think it looks good it looks like i want it to look and I love that the back is totally different and it's got like dark things there and the stripes and it's all the same fabric. You would have thought I used different fabrics, but I didn't. And then inside there is that. So I'm happy to have a black waistband if I'm gonna save main fabric that is amazing for something better like a sports bra that I've been planning to make for ages but I haven't gotten around to it, you know? I am obsessed with this one. I am obsessed really. <laughs> and I know it's a style that I like to wear, but you know, made in neat fabric makes it feel like you're wearing pajamas. And it's a dropped yoke with a flounce or with a swing, like the pattern calls it. And that is this one. I love it so much. You know, I know I've chosen the fabric that is not appropriate. This is single brush poly. It's very drapey, it's very nice, but it's very lightweight. So you definitely can't make this in a single layer. It's just not gonna work. <laughs> but I did line it as you saw, and I just have a mini skirt under here. I did not add the flounce, it's not necessary. I can still walk, this is stretch fabric. So that resolves the problem of being lightweight. Now it's turned into medium weight, <laughs> you know. And it feels amazing on. Again, I've done a contrast waistband. This fabric wouldn't have been appropriate for a waistband anyway. I'm obsessed. I love this. I did a really small hem of half an inch and pressed it up, hand basted it all the way around, and it's twin needled hem. Took ages, it is a full circle. Now, which of these skirts am I definitely going to make again and sooner rather than later because I am obsessed is just the one I've just shown you and I had another look in my stash for more fabric so this is the fabric that I found that I could use for this similar I would still have to line this this is not like I wouldn't make this in a single layer at all but I do have that black lining fabric I bought a lot of it so I do have enough to line and this one is an active wear fabric similar to the stripey one I've shown you. It actually feels the same quality and this is heavy. This is like, I don't know if you can see the weight of it. It drapes amazing. And look at this print. It's like green and tan and with some splotches of like animal print in there. I don't know, but I wouldn't have to line this one if I make the same style in this skirt. And I think it would be really, really nice and comfy to wear. You're gonna really enjoy it like I have. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow with another video. Bye and happy sewing.